many industries are investing heavily in blockchain. A year ago, the Harvard Business Review predicted that blockchain would revolutionize banking in the same way the internet changed media. And many manufacturers are looking to link the technology to smart contracts that can be digitally verified and enforced. But where are we in life sciences and healthcare? Are we looking at a revolution or an evolution in the adoption of blockchain? Welcome to Tales of Transformation. Today, I have Jonathan Fox, Ravi Kalakota, and Tim Smith from the Deloitte Consulting LLP Life Sciences and Healthcare Practice with me to continue our discussion on the transformative potential of blockchain in life sciences and healthcare. We talked last time about the individual opportunity within the sectors, but now let's take a more holistic view of how blockchain can break down industry silos and enable collaboration, coordination, and connectivity across healthcare stakeholders. Welcome, gentlemen. Hi, thank you so much for having me today. It's great to be here, Heidi. Good to be here. Blockchain's been around and we've been talking about it for a while. Let's talk from life sciences perspective. Jonathan, is there an opportunity for blockchain to link these sectors? I think as I look at one of the key integration points potentially with healthcare provider organizations, I think about clinical trials. I think about all of the patient data that we're aggregating. Mm -hmm. I think about the patient in general and all of the information that they're aggregating. How do we think about blockchain as a potential mechanism to both integrate and share data in a more effective way? So I think there's a, a lot of opportunity to link those two um, sort of sectors together from a health plan perspective and the relationship with pharma generally around the therapies and the medications that patients are on. And there's a number of mechanisms for contracting. We've been talking with our clients about how to utilize smart contracts in a way to create more efficiency in terms of the information that they're sharing and how to use that information with downstream impact with regards to reporting and some financial relationships that they have. So there's a tremendous opportunity to integrate many different parts of the healthcare ecosystem. Jonathan, I want to keep you on this conversation a little longer because I'm uh, passionate about clinical trials. To me, blockchain provides this key opportunity. Would you mind sharing a little bit more about clinical trials around the spectrum of care? I think blockchain can serve as one particular um, aspect because we're able to aggregate data, because we're able to learn more about patient populations. Can we then also start to think about how to use that information to even be more proactive in our design around patient populations? There's also interesting dynamics around um, how to be able to share information across trials or across different doctors or institutions. So I think it plays in the world of clinical trials, but there's also a practical reality of just sort of day-to-day care where it could play a role as well. So talking about the provider Tim, give us your opinion in terms of the uh, spectrum of care. I talked about this ultimate view of having a truly longitudinal blockchain-enabled patient record and, and that being sort of the North Star of what blockchain's potential could be. And if we ultimately got to that, you know, think of the ability to integrate that full-spectrum view of a patient into clinical trials and to be able to direct patients better to what opportunities there are out there for trials based on whatever conditions they may have. I also get excited when I think about in Robbie's world in the health plan area to be able to integrate that same record into care management to be able to have more effective care management for people with chronic diseases Mm -hmm. and where many patients have multiple chronic diseases and to be able to supply that to a care manager would really change the game, I think, for healthcare. Let me turn it over to you, Ravi. Last time you mentioned in our episode two this potential of blockchain for health plans and this provider network. Uh, directories. Tell us more about that opportunity and how it drives collaboration and connectivity. So provider data management is a huge expense today in the healthcare industry. Every health plan needs to create provider directories that are relevant for Medicare, Medicaid, commercial, and even retail exchanges. Mm -hmm. So every plan today has a huge number of people dedicated to both creating uh, credentialing and maintaining provider data. And so what plans are realizing is instead of 
every individual organization creating a separate provider directory, they're saying, why don't we just have a provider blockchain Mm -hmm. where we keep track of the NPI, the National Provider Identification, the Provider Tax ID, the specialties, the background information, the addresses that might be, you know, a doctor could be in multiple offices. So keep track of all of that in one blockchain is really where the market is headed. And that's the concept of a longitudinal provider blockchain. And this is where a lot of the health plans are starting to converge around because it it really takes a lot of cost out of the equation. Eddie, just to jump in from a provider perspective, we watch the health plans. And I think if they can get this provider network blockchain right, it really provides some good proof that even though a patient record is going to be far more complex than that, but that there is potential to really share provider information across the country, across health plans. I think what's also significant about this is that we're going to potentially eliminate or alleviate a lot of the waste and save healthcare dollars. I mean, right now, we're in a $3.5 trillion healthcare industry. We are 18% of the U.S. economy. So every dollar we can save is pretty critical, especially for the Medicare, Medicaid programs, Mm -hmm. which taxpayers are funding. So provider directory, directory management, if you think about how many billions are spent on it across every single company, it's a lot of expenditure. So the ability to trim and save that money is fairly significant. Ravi, what role can blockchain play in moving the industry forward with value-based agreements and contracts? This is a very critical question. Uh, Fee-for-service, which is the current model, is increasingly giving way to fee-for-value. And value-based contracts between payers and providers is a very critical element of Mm fee-for-value. So a key element of uh, fee-for-value as part of the contract is tracking the patient across the spectrum of care and making sure every party touching the patient has the most up-to-date information about the patient, test results, referrals, drugs they're taking, and so on, as the providers are enabling the care or providing the care. So in the value-based contract world, what the providers are increasingly being asked to do by payers is track the patient across the continuum of care and then increasingly measure what improvements they're seeing for that particular patient so that if, let's say, the outcomes are better, then the payers tend to pay the providers more money. Mm -hmm. If the outcomes are worse, then the payers actually decrease the amount of payments they would make to the providers. So these are all incentive-based models, and all these incentives require tracking around a patient. And that's why the patient blockchain is very critical, because we're not just tracking the patient information, we're also tracking what value we are creating for the patient across a longitudinal period. So Tim, from a provider perspective, what role can blockchain play in moving this industry forward from a value-based care perspective? I think there's two things I would pick up on. Robbie mentioned the continuum of care, and I think what's important to think through is the fact that oftentimes the continuum of care is not owned by one health system. So as as a health system signs up for a value-based contract, it's important to have that visibility across the continuum of care, which they might not fully own. And so a benefit to blockchain, if we had it, would be able to be able to see you know, detailed information about the patient no matter where that patient was seen, and that would definitely allow the the health system to be able to react accordingly based on a more comprehensive view of that patient. The other area that I think is worth discussing is integration with social services because Mm -hmm. we know so much about the patient's ultimate health is beyond just their interactions with the health system. The idea that I might be able to have blockchain extend further into social welfare would really be kind of an ultimate solution and truly provide a view that would allow overall health care to be managed more effectively. 
Jonathan, we know how important uh, life sciences is to this entire conversation. What's the tipping point in life sciences? We've reached a point now where I think we've gone beyond sort of the art of the possible. Um, People are really looking to understand practically what can I do. I I think there's a couple of potential places where we could look. I think one may not be a, a tipping point, but an interesting place for momentum is within the organization. I've seen some of our life sciences clients start to use blockchain within their internal finance organizations to manage those processes more effectively, more efficiently, and more securely. I think one of the areas that I'm particularly excited about is with regards to um, a new type of therapy, CAR-T therapy, which is an immunotherapy, Mm -hmm. which has a a tremendous amount of patient interaction where the patient's literally taking their own blood and and providing it back to the manufacturer. So it's a truly personalized therapy that's being um, engineered and provided back to the patient. And there's a tremendous process and number of handoffs and integration points across a number of organizations. I think it's very early stages for that therapy. And there's a lot of reasons why people will be nervous about integrating a new technology to a new therapy. Mm -hmm. But I wonder if that might represent a tipping point where we actually find a particular use case where there's truly a lot of value and a new therapy that needs the value drivers of blockchain. But time will tell The immunotherapy side of this is really exciting, and the idea that blockchain could help to integrate that conversation even further is uh, quite exhilarating from a patient care standpoint. Tim, healthcare, will that lead uh, industry to broader adoption? You know, I I think it will. We all keep coming back to this idea that we need a truly holistic view of patient data across the healthcare system. Mm -hmm. And I think there's two main things that are needed in order for that to be realized. I think one is that regulators, we need a little help there. And I think there's so much focus on interoperability uh, within Congress today that I think if we could move towards some requirements around interoperability across states, across health systems, that will ultimately push towards a meaningful change and potentially adoption of blockchain. And I think the other is having patients get a little bit more pushy and own their information more than what they do today. Because I think the push from a patient to really have that integrated view of their own data Mm -hmm. across every health system they interact with will be a game changer for them. This idea of patient-centered care is going to be an exciting place to participate in, in healthcare. Ravi, what are the specific challenges facing the industry when it comes to a broader adoption of blockchain? I think there are several challenges. I would start with identifying and converging on the right use cases. The second one that managers worry about is the business value and the ROI of doing a blockchain implementation. Mm -hmm. The third one, of course, is infrastructure capability and maturity. So if a firm wants to move into a blockchain implementation, and they need to put up $100 million, and let's say the technology changes next year, they need to have the confidence that the next version of technology is, of course, backward compatible. The fourth one is transformation execution. We're talking about transforming a business process across multiple firms, and those tend to be non-trivial exercises because you have to bring a lot of people in line to make it happen. Jonathan, what do you see as specific challenges facing the industry from a life sciences perspective for broader adoption? First of all, change is scary. We have a a lot of our different pharma clients who work in different functional areas and are trying to accomplish a particular objective. When you're trying to develop a new therapy and working in R&D, you're very focused on the science and maybe don't see adding something is necessarily better or enhancing. So I think we have to overcome organizational uh, inertia. I also think just from a regulatory perspective, with all of these new technologies, whether it's blockchain or others, whether true or perceived, organizations will raise the regulatory card to question whether or not this is something that's going to be okay or endorsed um, or supported from a regulatory perspective. The last one I'd highlight is It's sort of a chicken and the egg, but as a result of the lack of large-scale examples of blockchain, 
I think there's still questions about the technology. We hear on one hand that, you know, absolutes are around trust and security and, mm-hmm. and the others, and I know there are different examples and maybe not directly a great analog, but there are other cases in the cases of Bitcoin where um, there has been security issues. So I think with regards to the actual technology and understanding the value, how to implement, et cetera, there are some challenges and questions that people have. As we come to the close of the show, uh, Tim, what do you see as uh, challenges facing this area when it comes to broader blockchain adoption? I, I think it comes down to silos. I think it's organizational silos. It's technology silos. Those are the things that inhibit sharing of patient information today. And I think the more there's incentive to push information for the benefit of patients across health systems, the more we're going to see technologies like blockchain be the solution for at least the provider industry. Making blockchain serve healthcare will require working out a number of understandings. Thank you, gentlemen, for giving us so much more information about where we stand with blockchain, its opportunity to integrate and to share health data for life sciences, for the plans and provider, and ultimately the patient. I want to thank my guests, Jonathan, Ravi, and Tim, for joining me today on Tales of Transformation. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next up, how is the no-collar workforce and the future of work transforming the life sciences and healthcare industries? And are we ready? Ready?